Hello, welcome to another week with me, Danny, that witch next door. You are listening to another episode of That Witch Podcast and welcome YouTube to this week's pre-show tarot reading. Probably shouldn't cover my mouth up so you can hear me, <laughs> sorry. Oh, hello everybody. I'm really excited for today's episode. Um, it's going to be, you probably already noticed, it's going to be a chunky one today. It's going to be kind of a long video. I promise it is super interesting um, and just value-packed with information. We have quite the fundamentals episode for you today. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you stick around. But first, I want everybody to plant both of their feet, whether you're standing, whether you're sitting, if you're able to, unless you're driving, in which case, please do with your feet what you need to do right now. <laughs> Uh, I will tell you right now, um, oh, I guess if you're on YouTube, you're probably not um, listening to me in the car, but maybe you are. Maybe you are. Be careful if you are driving and watching a video. Just throwing that out there. I'm not your mom. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, that felt really weird. Like a card was backwards. It's not. I mean, face up. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Everybody, both feet planted if you are able to. Let's all take a nice deep cleansing breath together. Let that shit out. Open yourself up to any insight and guidance that you are seeking right now. If there's any specific issue, any area of life, personal quality, any relationship with somebody, allow that to come forth and try and just be present in this moment. Open yourself up because we have a reversed two of cups. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and this is the 10th episode, so forgive me for not remembering, but if I'm not mistaken, we've got two of cups reversed before. How don't we? I'll have to look. I'll have to go and look. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this, okay? Because something is out of balance. Something is out of whack. Two of cups in any two is going to imply some kind of duality, right? And so there is a very high possibility that this is you and another person, that this is some kind of relationship, no matter how familiar that relationship is to you, okay? Whether it's a really close one or more of a, a distance one or an acquaintance or whatever, this can very well be a relationship. But I do always want to make note, especially when it comes to this deck, um, when we're looking at both figures here, it's also almost like a self and a shadow self. So this can also very much be nobody else and this can just be you or this can be a situation, okay? But this represents overall duality. And in that duality, there is some kind of a uh, tear happening, okay? Some kind of torment is happening that is throwing everything out of balance and everything out of whack. Most likely, someone or something is pouring all of themselves into something and somebody else is not giving anything. And they are on the taking and receiving end only. This can show up in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, like I was saying. But I want you to first ask yourself which figure, which figure's energy you feel the most right now. Are you the one feeling really overworked and drained? Are you the one feeling like you are putting in twice, if not more, effort than the other is? Or is there something, is there something you're giving more of yourself to and neglecting something else? And that is what's going dry and draining. Okay? Two of Cups is very, very, something is out of balance here. Okay? Now, when we want to bring Two of Cups into balance, here's what we want to do. 
This is definitely going to be something related to connecting with the water element, some kind of emotional healing, some kind of watery activity, okay? Um, and it really does kind of depend on wh where you feel like you are. If you feel like you are the one feeling very drained, or do you know that you are honestly taking advantage of a situation a little bit? Are you taking more than you are giving as well? Ask yourself honestly, because the way that you bring this into balance really does depend on that. If you feel like you are over uh, working yourself, over, like giving more of yourself than you are getting from someone or something, it really is time to draw some fucking boundaries, okay? It's really time to draw some boundaries. And remember, is that drawing boundaries with yourself? Does that mean you need to respect boundaries within yourself? Be honest with yourself when you're asking these big questions. Are you the one bulldozing your own boundaries and therefore, you know, maybe it's it's for somebody or something, but are you the one at the end of the day not holding the boundary? Be honest. And if so, we need to tighten those up, right? You need to find the ability to say no. It's okay. It's okay to say no and not explain yourself, by the way. And then if you are taking a bit of advantage of somebody, if you know that somebody is giving more to you, this is going to be really common in a relationship, for example, where you know that the other person cares more for you and is putting more into the relationship than you are, I want you to ask yourself why. Why do you think that is? Why do you think you're allowing that to happen? Why do you think you're allowing somebody to give more to you and you're knowingly not meeting them halfway? Can you ask yourself why? Because if you can honestly answer that question, we can find a lot of healing. We can, we can move forward from that situation. And even though it might be really hard to move forward, from that situation and it might be hard on everybody involved uh it's also going to be the best thing for everybody involved it's also going to give everybody involved their best shot okay remember that are you keeping somebody from their own freedom i i i feel very called to be asking these hard questions right now seriously somebody listening to this falls into that and needs this message very, very much. Are you taking too much from a relationship and not meeting that person halfway? Are you not really wholeheartedly showing up to your role in that relationship? And if not, why? Why? Is, do you not want to be in that relationship anymore? It's okay if, if you do, if you want to stay in the relationship. I certainly am never here to tell you to break up or not break up with anybody. Sheesh. No, thank you. I'll never take that role. But I'll, I'll leave that decision to you. It's a hard enough decision as it is. But you need to ask yourself why you're letting this happen. And you need to make a decision if you're going to stay or if you're going to go. And if you're going to stay, you need to figure out the ways in which you can you know, really wholeheartedly show up to this relationship. That person deserves this. I can feel that very, very much. This other person is overall very well-meaning and loves you very intently. And it is okay if you don't feel the same way. It's okay if things are changing. It's okay if things are not aligned anymore. That's okay. If you just don't want to be with somebody anymore, that's enough of a reason. I think that a lot of people need to hear that sometimes. That's enough of a reason, I promise. It's valid. You're valid. Don't hurt this person by lying to them about your feelings, okay? It's, it's already coming through in your actions. Somebody is giving more than the other, and they're getting burnt out they're already in the process of getting kind of hurt okay so uh, this is a hard one two of cups reversed is is a tough one 
a really good way um, to practice empathy is I honestly think through some visualization meditation, okay? Literally visualizing yourself stepping outside of your world, outside of your own bubble, and, and allowing yourself to observe others. I really, I really think that that's a, a good way to do it without, and through visualization, meditation is going to be a lot safer emotionally than doing it like on social media, like going on social media and just stalking somebody. That's not the kind of observation I'm talking about. If you go into this visualization meditation with the very clear intent that you want to detach from your yourself and your emotional attachments to your life and your current path right now so that you are able to completely open your eyes and completely observe those around you and what their lives may look like and what their experiences may feel like right now. You will be able to do so in a really safe way and be able to really put yourself in other people's shoes, in other people's positions. And Sometimes you might feel sympathy from this, right? But sometimes it also, what this exercise does, is it shows you disalignment between you and others in your life. And it's not super easy when we really just visually see these like stark differences in our fundamentals that no longer align our paths really, really dividing from somebody. It's not easy to look at. But if you do it, if you're able to really successfully do this exercise a few times, I think that you'll be able to have the most successful compassion for all parties involved, including yourself. I think you'll be able to achieve real compassion for this other party, for these other people even maybe, without sacrificing self, without sacrificing self-compassion. Okay. Wow, pre-show tarot reading really getting heavy these last few weeks, haven't we? I love this deck. I just wanted to give you another little close-up. Here it is, right side up. So pretty. Ah, beautiful. And look, I finally figured out how to uh, get it to focus on camera. Ooh, there is a little surprise here. I had two cards stuck together. Do you want to see what they are? They were sticking out just right. There we go. Temperance and Four of Cups. Hi, everyone. Emotion is the name of the game today. We got three cups. Cool thing is, is both of these were right side up. However... Look at this, big reminder. Don't focus on that empty cup that I just showed you. This is a good reminder. I'm so glad I found that. I, I paid attention to that. My deck just didn't feel smooth around the edges. I'm glad I figured it out. So, those empty two of cups that I just showed you, don't focus on that loss because there is still so much that you have, okay? What I just showed you is important information to have. But you have so much more, okay? Don't, don't hyper-focus on this, especially if you are the one I'm talking to about. Are you taking advantage of somebody? You're not this bad person, okay? We all go through this. We all go through this natural ebb and flow of relationship roles, okay? Everybody has been on both sides, of this situation before. You're not a shitty person. We have all been there before. You do need to have compassion for this other person, but I mean it when I say you need to also have compassion for yourself and remember what you have and to still nurture what you still have. Very, very much so. Because look at this beautiful healing energy that we were sent, okay? I love temperance. I love the temperance card. Um, 
This is very, very much a powerful, powerful healing card, as in, like, inevitable healing that comes from a lot of destruction and death and change and heartache and stuff. Temperance is a freaking beautiful omen. And you know what's funny? Is that today, so the day that I'm recording this is September 16th. You are most likely watching this the day that it comes out, which is Tuesday, September 21st. But I have been noticing recently this real change in the air and this real turning point for the collective. For a lot, a lot of people um, in the collective that have been really struggling, especially on a personal level, those things that you've been really, really given and being tested with as an individual, we're seeing the progress. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Here, you look, you're focusing on the empty cup. No, we're seeing the progress. You're really seeing it. That's what this is. Oh my God. And I threw the two of cups back in here, so I can't grab it for you. Sorry. But this is the empty two of cups that I showed you. Okay. Don't focus on it. It's important information, but don't focus on it because all of this is this. All of this that you have is what you've gained in this massive time of rebirth that you've been in, this massive chapter of transformation you've been in. There is real progress you've been having, and you can, like, see it now. Fucking beautiful. I'm happy for you, and I love you. I'm so proud of you. Mmm. Look at that. We started out heavy hitter, right? But this ended up on such a beautiful, heart-fulfilling note. Ugh, I'm so excited. Okay. Well, that makes me even more excited for today's episode. This beautiful fundamentals of altars and tools today. One of the most popular, popular subjects. One of the most common um, questions that I always get asked about is, is, anything pertaining to an altar and all the different tools in witchcraft. And so I'm really excited to start diving into that today. You don't want to miss it. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. This is a very visual episode today. Okay, so this is one you might want to watch the whole YouTube video for today because I brought all my goodies with me. Stick around. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of That Witch Podcast. I'm Danny, That Witch Next Door, your guide, your instructor, and your mentor in all things magic, witchcraft, astrology, and of course, witchy business. So today's episode, as I'm sure you already noticed by that timestamp, is a chunky one, but I promise it's not only worth it, you're going to love it. Today's Fundamental of Magic episode is covering some of my most favorite things in the world, and I cannot wait to jump into that, but before we do, we have some announcements today. First up, I would like to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Podzilla Productions. My husband, Jared Wright, owns the lovely Podzilla, and he is insanely talented and knowledgeable and skillful when it comes to all things audio. So no, it's not my mic that sounds so good, but thank you all so much for always complimenting and inquiring about the microphone that we have. And I have no idea what it is, sorry about that. Sorry, babe, I'm not selling that part very well. But uh, the reason I sound so good is because of the absolute wizard that my husband is with his editing software. So not only does he edit shows, he is also gearing up to start offering um, podcast editing education as well, to start teaching other upcoming podcast hosts how to edit their own audio with the really just easy, basic software and steps so that you sound crystal clear really professional, and um, you're obviously saving money on editing, obviously. <laughs> so, podzillaproductions.com, you can go there right now. You can find a link in the description to book a service with my husband for your episode or a consultation, and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, next up on the announcements docket 
is my free masterclass coming up, coming up very soon, by the way. It is going to be on Thursday, September 30th at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Don't worry at all if you can't make the live class. Um, I am going to also make the replay available for free as well. But this is called How to Start a Witchy Business That's Actually Legit and You Are Going to Love It. Are you a tarot reader trying to get your readings like really up and off the ground? Are you a new astrology reader that's really finally starting to feel comfortable with your knowledge and you want to start offering your services? Are you a spiritual intuitive or creative and you are ready to, to get on Etsy or maybe get off of Etsy and, and stand out on your own? Are you ready to start establishing your social media presence? Um, and really genuinely start taking your witchy or spiritual or astro business seriously. You don't want to just, you know, start an Instagram and not know what you're doing. And if that's you right now, then this class is for you, okay? It's totally 100% free. No obligation, I promise you. I am going to tell you about my awesome mentorship program at the end of the class because this masterclass is actually a full week's worth of content and materials directly from my Think and Grow Witch mentorship that I will be launching very, very soon. Um, the wait list for that is filling up way faster. Seri like, ser I keep saying it. I keep coming on video and saying that. And every time I do, I'm like, oh my God. Um, it's amazing. Keep, um, keep signing up for the wait list, but don't forget to submit your application. Submitting that pre-application is key um, to getting scheduled with me for a compatibility call, okay? That application just really shows me that you're definitely, definitely interested in the program. Um, but this free masterclass is a full week's worth of content and materials from this program that I am giving you for free not just the um, the lecture portion, but I will also be giving you the full complete guide and workbook from that section of the program as well. So it's a really nice uh, companion to the actual class itself and you are not gonna wanna miss this. This class is gonna be about 90 minutes long and it is going to be packed with information so that you can really feel confident starting your business or maybe if you already did and you feel like you're flopping a little bit this is going to genuinely help get you on track and at the end of the uh, um i almost said episode at the end of the class i'll be doing a live q a so it's a really great opportunity to come and get your specific question answered by me okay so if you are interested in joining me for this master class it's going to be live via zoom Thursday, September 30th at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Again, if you can't make it live, that is totally okay. What you can do is you can either send me a DM on Instagram or you can shoot me an email to thatwitchnextdoor at gmail.com or you can find me on Instagram at thatwitch.nextdoor and just send me your first and last name and your email address and I will send you the link to the class. Okay, and then um, that email that you provide is also where I will send the replay, whether you can come live or not. So look at that. You get this whole class for free. You don't want to miss this opportunity, seriously, okay? So don't miss out on that. It's very, very soon. It's only nine days away. And lastly, what I want to let you know is if you are listening to this episode um, if you're listening to the audio version of this episode right now, I really do want to encourage you to listen or to watch. Good Lord, can I freaking talk today? I do want to encourage you to watch the YouTube video for today because I am bribing you with a super, super visual episode today. I'm sure you already saw in the episode title, we are talking all about the fundamentals of altars and tools in witchcraft. And I am very excited. I brought lots of my favorite goodies, not all of them, because there's not enough space on my husband's desk at all. And I will break something and he would not appreciate that. So I am bribing you to get you over to YouTube, please, to watch this episode today. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
I'm going to get real with you. Even if you don't like watching the episodes on YouTube, that's totally fine. You can listen to me audio forever. I promise I will always love you. Please still go subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it really helps my YouTube analytics. It really helps my reach a lot. And um, when you're fresh, fresh starting out on YouTube or any social media platform from scratch, you know how it feels. So this is my super shameless plug. Uh, please go subscribe to my YouTube channel, even if you don't want to watch my videos. <laughs> I would really appreciate the subscription. So thank you. And now it's on to the episode. But for real, you would probably like to watch this one because there's lots of good stuff here today. Where do I even begin? I have so many goodies in front of me and I'm going to really try not to spill any of my drinks while I record. So here's what I tried to do today. I tried to bring a wide variety of tools, uh, but still kind of keep things basic. I didn't really bring anything out of the super ordinary. I kept things overall pretty basic because I did want this to still be a fundamentals episode, okay? So I still wanted this to kind of be down to the basics, um, but I still wanted to bring a nice variety just to show you that honestly, your altar can have whatever the fuck you want on it. And ladies and gentlemen and everyone and magical folks near and wide, um, that's lesson number one of today, okay, is your altar, your rules, baby, okay? I see so much passionate, passionate um, rule stating about altars. <laughs> online okay here's the deal an altar is like a life it's nobody else's but your own okay and everyone can have the biggest fucking opinion about it that they want to and that's fine let people have like a humongous opinion about your altar sure if that makes them feel really good i hope you have a really big opinion about my altar and what i do with it um it doesn't matter it's my altar it's my place of worship period. Okay. So that's lesson number one today, folks strap in. Um, and then also I will say that being said, you're going to want to first and foremost, brush up on your cleansing and your protection magic and techniques. Okay. So your altar, your rules, but let's make sure that this area is really well purified um, physically and energetically, and then also very, very firmly protected as well. I do a lot, a lot of protection magic. It's not to brag, but kind of the upside of having health-related and disaster-related anxiety. <laughs> If you struggle with anxiety um, and you're a witch, you probably do a fuck ton of protection magic. <laughs> and um, that's awesome. I do the exact same thing. And for me, it's honestly a very, very effective tool for my anxiety. So um, it's also very good practice for your spiritual and sacred space like your altar. So you do really want to make sure that all of your tools any object, any talisman, whether it's even if it's just little shelves or, or boxes you have on there, you know, even if it's not the actual tool, like it's a holder or a container, everything really does need to be cleansed, okay? Uh, I don't even give myself a lot of wiggle room on this. My altar is the sacred space. There's other places for mess and for wiggle room in my life, I assure you. <laughs> I assure you, I leave room for those things in my life. My altar is one of those places that I keep with the utmost respect, okay? Now, that being said, do things get dusty? Yeah, 100%. And do I go a little bit long in between, like, cleaning and, like, tidying it up? Yes, absolutely. What I am saying, though, is that whenever I want a new tool for my my altar, whether it's something that was gifted to me or something that I purchased on purpose, that puppy gets cleansed, okay? So no matter what, it gets cleansed. I don't care where it came from or how it was purchased. I don't care if the very nice lady at the store cleansed it for me. That's very nice and very 
it was still a very valid and effective cleansing. Uh, it is still very much part of my personal uh, ritual to cleanse every cleanse and consecrate every single object that goes on my altar. Now, this brings me to the term consecrate. A lot of people that have not heard this word or don't know what it means. It just means to bless something, to make something sacred because you deem it so. Okay, so if there was, for example, like another person that you worshipped, that person could consecrate something for you. In this line of, I almost said in this line of work, I guess it is a line of work, in this line of spirituality, in this type of lifestyle, in witchcraft, typically you are the person who does the blessing and the consecrating. But I do ask my guides and I do ask my gods and goddesses to bless certain things for me in addition to my myself also consecrating the object. So I am kind of going over like the general things and the general practice around altars and then we'll get into to the specific tools, by the way. So remembering to have good overall strong protection, right? So almost every time I step up to my altar, I put a protection orb around me and around my altar. And I speak and visualize a long-term protection orb over my sacred space very regularly, if not every day, every other day. I mean, very, very frequently. And, you know, I have had to remind a lot of uh, baby witches or beginner practitioners this, but there is a lot of power in repeating and doing something regular like that. Ritual is very sacred. But I want you to also give yourself peace of mind and know that that magic does carry over and that protection does carry over in between the times of you speaking it, okay? And if at any time that magic or that energy does feel like weakened or dampened, then just go refresh it and go do it again. Um, you know, kind of naturally today, we'll talk a little bit about hexing and cursing and stuff like that, but we're not going to necessarily focus on it today. But mainly what I want to remind you is that because an altar is such a sacred space and because we connect so much in our online community within the spiritual and witchcraft community, an altar in our practice can feel very vulnerable as well. And a lot of seasoned witches and practitioners will remind you that it is that. It is a vulnerable space and to be mindful of that. I also want you to know that you can reach a level of protection over that space that makes it not vulnerable anymore, if that makes sense. So some people, and what I'm leading into here is some people choose adamantly to keep their altar and their tools and anything to do with their practice explicitly private. Sometimes they keep it private because they literally live somewhere where they uh, don't feel safe sharing it. Um, but sometimes they keep it private because in that privacy, it makes uh, that sacred space and those tools more protected and more sacred. Then you have the flip side of the spectrum, the opposite end of the spectrum, that, you know, as long as you put protection over your objects and your space, you can share any and all parts of your practice that you want to. I would agree with that end of the spectrum, though I don't do it, if that makes sense. So I agree that you can show and share whatever the fuck you want. I don't care at all. Um, you, you are going to technically, yes, especially if you get more and more exposure online, there is more probability that someone could try to hex you or send negative energy toward you or towards your sacred space. Um, and then in which case I would encourage you to just educate yourself in hex and curse breaking and cleanse yourself of that. That's why I get frustrated is that I, I understand that curses can be very powerful, 
but I also choose to empower myself with the power to break any any curse or hex that is sent my fucking way. Myself and my spiritual team will ensure of that. And so that's really the best attitude that you can take. That's really the best power that you can take on. And then you can choose what you do and don't want to share with people. And that's what I do. So I share a decent amount of my altar and my tools and my and and good chunks of my practice with everybody on social media. And you're going to see a lot of my tools today. And I take big pictures of my altar as well and, and post those online. I don't take pictures and show pictures of my Book of Shadows, which is different than my journals, by the way, which is what I have to show you here today. Um, my Book of Shadows is definitely different than those. And I, I don't, I never have taken a picture of it. And um, I, I think I've shown some people the physical book itself when I very first started practicing because I've had it forever. Um, but I, I haven't done that in a long time. I don't share it with most people. And then the parts of my practice that I keep the most private are my actual spells and rituals. Sometimes I'll take up close shots and share those online once in a while. But I don't like take pictures of my ritual and walk you through what I do and things like that. I don't. I definitely have plans to put out spell books in the future. Don't get me wrong. They're really, really fun to write. Just like I definitely have plans to write a cookbook as well. But uh, as far as my personal magic goes, when I'm performing a specific money spell, when I'm performing a specific self-love ritual or divination like third eye opening spell or whatever I usually don't share that at all I keep things like that private um and a lot of my rituals I don't take a picture at all sometimes taking a picture feels like you're empowering the ritual and sometimes it feels like you're taking away power from the ritual so you just always always want to use your best judgment and follow your intuition because it could totally change day to day ritual to ritual just follow your gut and make sure again that you are spiritually and energetically cleansing and spiritually and energetically protecting yourself and whatever it is that you're doing okay now i do want to talk briefly about altar etiquette when we talk about this being a sacred space what the fuck does that mean right what really makes it more sacred than any other surface area besides you know the tools that you put on it right or or the the gods or goddesses that you worship and speak with at it well to me even more than that it's how you treat the area it's your behavior and your thoughts around the area and so i do not use my altar as like just any old surface area ever I never set my phone on it ever um the only time I like set my phone on it is when I'm filming like a video or a TikTok or a reel or something and I'm just filming up close but I never use it as a shelf is what I mean I never just put shit on there if I actually used to ask permission to set down my lighter every time before I set it down and now it's like, all right, the lighter's part of the fucking deal here. <laughs> I think we can all agree that I can set the lighter down. Um, but one thing you can actually do is really decorate a lighter and make it really special and bless it and consecrate it. And then um, it could actually be a tool on your altar, which I do keep meaning to do and I just keep not doing it. So this just reminded me and I'll do that. But it overall, it's your attitude and your behavior around it. So I don't just use it like any old surface area. My main altar is on my dresser in my bedroom. And, you know, I used to use my altar or my altar. I used to use my dresser, I don't know, the way that I would assume most people still use their dressers. <laughs> 
<laughs> what they use it for. I uh, used to put like jewelry on there and perfume and I don't know, different little knickknacks or pictures or things like that. And so it, the reason I'm telling you this is it took me a long time to unlearn the mindless habit of just throwing shit on my altar. So I used to just throw my phone on there all the time. Anything, I throw all kinds of things on there all the time. I still have to get dressed, so I still open the drawers and like get clothes all the time. And a lot of times I'm holding something in my hands and you know, it sure is convenient having a surface area right there. <laughs> but that is one of the ways that I really do <clears throat> show my dedication and my commitment, not just to, to my guides and my deities, it's to show that commitment and dedication to myself. That's how I show myself, that I keep somewhere so sacred, so special, that I refuse to act and think and behave mindful or mindlessly around it. Nice, I refuse to act mindfully around it. What a great thing to say. I refuse to act mindlessly around it. I'm not saying that we need to be so rigid in our behavior and our thoughts that we're like constantly suffering or constantly stressed out or anxious. Our, our spirituality should not make us feel stressed out and anxious. I've said it once and I'll say it again a million times. If there is anything in like witchcraft or astrology or any part of this path that sucks and that you don't like and is stressing you out or making you feel pressure or whatever, let it go. Let it go. I will talk about this when we get to the tools, but I got crazy crystal obsessed which probably every witch does at one point or another. And some just stay crystal obsessed and I love those crystal witches. Um, but I got to a point for me personally um, where I was stressed out because I didn't have anywhere to put all of these stones. A lot of them were tumbled and I didn't put them on display or anything. And I just, I was up to my ears and I really get triggered and stressed out from clutter, things that look super super cluttered kind of like the shit show I have in front of me I wish you could see but having that many crystals that I wasn't using I wasn't connected with I really only bought it because I was a new witch and it was really exciting and it was really fun to buy new crystals and new tools and stuff like that and I had to let it go man one day I finally was like you have served your time with me thank you Thank you, I love you, I appreciate you, and I release you. And I cleansed every single one of those little beauties and I donated them. And there's lots of ways you can donate your tools and, and you can like really ethically release things, okay? Without, you know, just throwing shit in the trash and therefore the landfill or whatever. So there are lots of ways that you can release old versions of yourself and old versions and parts of your practice okay that's why I love these fundamentals episodes because like I said um I don't know a few episodes ago they're they really are for everybody these really are good reminders no matter how long you've been practicing whether it's a few months or many many years you are often going to go through transformations in your spirituality. You're going to go through rebirth periods. And therefore, you kind of stack up old shit, old baggage, old versions of yourself, and therefore old tools, right? And it's okay to let those parts go and to say thank you for everything that you've done for me. Thank you for our time together you have served your purpose with me and now I lovingly release you. And if there's something you want to release without the love in it, that's totally okay too. Um, okay, now altar etiquette, we're not just setting shit on there. We're not acting and thinking super mindlessly. This is a place that you really step into the energy of, okay? I really feel myself cross over this invisible threshold when I step up to my altar which is hilarious because technically with the way our room is arranged and where my altar is 
my I have to stand on my dog's bed, which is actually adorable because most of my altar is dedicated to Hades. And um, I have an all black dog. And so I find it actually very appropriate and endearing and adorable that my dog sleeps at the foot of um, my altar for Hades. Isn't that so cute? Like Cerebus. Anyways, sorry, little Greeky Hellenistic witch nerd out over here. Anyways, I really feel myself step over this invisible threshold when I step into the space of my altar. And I'm not saying that I stress myself out by speaking like crazy formally and you know what I mean? I still show up very authentically and I am myself, but I do show up with the most respect that I have. That's how I show up wholeheartedly to my sacred space and to my altar is with nothing but my utmost respect. That's the energy, okay? And the more you do that every single fucking time you work with or sit at or stand at your altar, the more that that energy will build and collect there. And the same goes for the cleansing and the same goes for the energy protection and the same goes for all the beautiful things that you manifest in that space. When you, oh, even talking about it, I have such amazing chills right now. When you do all of these magical acts and think all these magical thoughts every time you're in this space and you make a point to let go of, even if it's just for a little while, just while you're standing in that space, you agree to release and let go of anything stagnant, anything that would, you know, harsh the vibe or hold you back, right? Anything like that at all, anything that would harm anything. When you let go of all that and step into that energy space and you create this magic over and over again and you protect it and you manifest there and you say your thanks there, the magic and imprint that you will build and leave, it's, it's immense. And just so you know, in my opinion, this is the point of an altar. It becomes this like life, blood, heart center of your work when you really create one true sacred space. And we can have many of them. Don't get me wrong. I have multiple sacred spaces. I'm not saying that I don't. But I do have one true life, blood, heart center place. And that's my main altar at my dresser in my bedroom. And it has become that because of all of the energy I have brought into that space and all of the energy I have banished from that space as well. And it has become this center for just like nothing but nourishment and power for my practice. And that's why when you have a nice, healthy, cared for, respected, sacred altar, no matter where you go, no matter how far away from it at any time you may be, it's working, it's nourishing, and it's empowering. It's giving its lifeblood. <gasps> it's powerful shit. Even talking about it, I just, my heart's like pounding right now, <laughs> giving all these heart analogies. But seriously, <clears throat> it's a really powerful place. And if you are a long time practicing witch, I think that this is a really empowering reminder. I think it's a really inspiring reminder. And, uh, God, even talking about it, I just thought of like a million different Instagram posts to make and share with you guys. So, yay, look out for those. Okay, so we're remembering our etiquette. We're remembering our mindset around this place because of how sacred and important it is because of the true underlying purpose that this space and this altar serves. What does it look like, right? That's the part that we're starting to get into now. What does it look like? And there are tons of different types. So like I already said, I have four. There are tons of types of altars and many different reasons for altars and many different dedications okay god there's boundless dedications there are infinite things you can dedicate an altar to pick a thing 
dedicate an altar to it. There you go. Like, it's infinite, the things. Um, some people have an altar just for a deity. Some people worship multiple deities at one altar. Um, <clears throat> some play people are limited on space and they have one main altar and worship just in general there. They they call forth different energies or different members of their spiritual team, right? Call on the elements, call on the universe. They call on many, many different types of energies and beings, but work with them in this one main space. Um, there, And when I say types, this can be types as in dedications, like I said, like different energies that you work with and worship there, but also physical types. Mine's on a dresser. This could be a coffee table. It could be an end table. It could be a nightstand. It could be a tin, a metal tin. Have, have you ever seen those cute little portable, like, Altoids tins? And they're little, like, travel altars. Um, I have uh, technically two at my workspace, actually. I technically have two. So, really, I have a total of five altars then. I do technically have two altars at my workspace. I almost consider the whole entire desk an altar. So maybe it's one giant one or there's two, one on each end of my desk. And then I have an altar in my kitchen because I, <clears throat> I am a very dedicated kitchen witch. And so having an altar in my kitchen is very, very, very important to me. That is the center for all of my kitchen and all of my hearth magic. I do some of my hearth magic down here at our hearth. Um, but the hearth, what it represents, is the heart center of your home. And a lot of times this is the kitchen because this is the place that people come to and like join together the most. That is definitely true in our house. So that is why I absolutely had to have an altar in our kitchen. I think that was my second altar ever. I'm pretty sure that was my top priority after the my main altar in my bedroom. And then I have one in my bathroom. So I have really dedicated my mirror, sink, makeup, shower space. My bathroom itself really is an altar. I take a lot, a lot of pride in my bathroom um, because I am such a water witch and such a water sign. And, and I, you know, you've listened to me say this a million times. I have so, so much water in my chart. And so I do a lot of water work in the bathroom with bath rituals and shower rituals and stuff. And then I wash, I'm very ritualistic about my skincare and getting ready, my glamour magic. And so I really, probably a year or two ago, really dedicated my bathroom to my to my witchcraft and my my sacred space so those are my main areas just to give you an idea of how completely different they all are okay some people have a special place in their closet because that's safe and it's hidden and it's private but it's their own um some people have it there not just because they you know maybe they're hiding their practice from people because they don't feel safe sharing it Maybe people know about their practice, but they just want a physically private place to go. So a lot of people will put their altar in a space that they can go be alone. And this is where that travel altar really, really comes in. For a lot of different people, that travel altar can fit so many different kinds of lifestyles. And the cool part is it's a really good way to practice minimal magic. And I love that. We're going to start talking about minimal magic more and more so that you know, just as part of a ethical, sustainable witchcraft practice, right? And being really mindful of our environment and, and our consumption and, and things like that. So, so a working altar really encourages, you know, keeping the most important things because you can only travel with so much. You're a little bit limited when it comes to space. And in some ways, this can be really, really beautiful, actually, because, you keep the most important things and you're almost constantly in this state of transformation transformation and shed where you're constantly thanking and releasing these old versions and old tools of yours. I really love that. So allow yourself to be really open-minded. 
and really, really creative when it comes to making your altar. And if you already have an altar, I hope that you're still feeling really inspired by this, whether that is going to your altar right now and letting your intuition run wild or adding a whole new altar somewhere in your life, whether that's in your home or again, in your car. Actually, technically, oh, there's another one. You know, they keep coming. I do have altars everywhere. I do also have in my car. I, I really bless my car as well. Again, health and disaster related anxiety. I energetically cleanse and protect my car regularly. And I have a nice, big, fat, evil eye hanging in my rear view mirror. And I love it. So let yourself be really creative. Let yourself be really open minded. Don't let yourself, here's a list of don'ts, don't let yourself be bogged down by other people's aesthetics. So just because you're inspired by somebody and it looks so good, don't let that make you think that yours won't look good or not as good. It's not about that. Aesthetic is as important as you want and need it to be, always, whether it's a ritual a page in your journal or book of shadows or your altar, okay? And honestly, an Instagram picture. Do you. I guarantee you that you are probably critiquing it way more than anybody else is going to. And a lot of people would probably like to see it. I'm talking about the picture on Instagram. But as far as your altar goes, do you like it? Do you, does it look pleasing to you? That's what matters. Do you look at your altar and does it stress you out? Because that's happened to me before. Busy witch life. So if it becomes stressful or unenjoyable, what do we do? We look for the areas of disalignment and we release. Okay. So now that we understand the overall general building blocks around an altar, right? As far as what you put on it, this episode is not like the tools that I'm about to show you. I am not sitting here and saying these are the absolute must haves on your altar. I'm not saying that at all. These are my favorite tools. Okay, that's that's all. And I am really excited to show them with you. Okay, so let's do this. 